today we are going to discuss capacitors. What is a capacitor? A capacitor is a two-terminal electrical component that may store energy in the form of an electric charge. It is made up of two electrical wires separated by a certain distance. The space between the conductors can be filled with vacuum or dielectric, which is an insulating substance. What is the main use of a capacitor? Capacitors can help with voltage pulsation. The capacitor is charged when a high voltage is applied to the motor. Charge when a low voltage is applied. While most electronic circuits use direct current, the electricity flowing flowing out is alternating current. The different types of capacitor: ceramic capacitor, electrolytic capacitor, and paper capacitor. Ceramic capacitors are employed in wide range of circuits and applications. Coupling, decoupling, smoothing, and filtering are the four basic capacitor applications explained in the detail below. Electrolytic capacitor is a type of capacitor that uses an electrolyte to achieve a larger capacitance than other capacitor types. An electrolyte is a liquid or gel containing a high concentration of ions. Paper capacitor is a fixed capacitor in which flat thin strips of metal foil or usually an alum aluminum is separated by dielectric material paper. Paper capacitors are used for medium capacitance value 1 NF to 1 UF mainly at power line frequency. The basic concepts of a capacitor so first, I have made a graph which regards to the basic concepts of capacitor. So let us first discuss the store energy or static voltage. The capacitor is a component which has the ability or capacity to store energy in the form of an electrical charge producing a potential difference or static voltage across its plates, much like a small rechargeable battery. Next, dielectric. So the simplest construction of a capacitor is by using two parallel conducting metal plates separated through a distance by insulating material called dielectric. When connected to a source of charge, such as a battery, the positive terminal of the source removes electrons from the plate connected to it and transfers them to the other plate. As a result, the two plates are equally but oppositely charged. Next. A capacitor is usually named after the dielectric material used. So, common dielectric material used in a capacitor are mica, glass, air, ceramic, and paper. Next, I'm going to show you the standard symbol for a capacitor. So, these are the standard symbol for a capacitor. So, we have the fixed capacitor, polarized capacitor, and a variable capacitor. Next, I'm going to show you the basic parts of a parallel plate capacitor. So we have two basic parts. We have the conductive plate and the dielectric. So the conductive plates are located on the top and the bottom, the gray part or the letter A. And then the, the dielectric is located between the conductive plate. It is the blue part or the letter B. Next, I'm going to show you the examples of capacitors and the different material used in it. So look at the examples carefully. Capacitance. Capacitance refers to the measure of a capacitor's ability to store energy in the form of electric charge. Yung capaci capacitance ang nagdadal sa atin kung gaano kagaling or how good a capacitor is in storing charge. So, a capacitor with a larger capacitance will store or can store more charge. Capacitance is mathematically expressed as C equals Q over V, where C is the capacitance, Q is the charge stored in the capacitor, and V is the voltage across the capacitor. Technically, a capacitor has zero charge, as it has an equal amount of positive charge and negative charge. But a Q in the formula refers to the charge stored in one side of the capacitor. 
As for V or voltage, it refers to the difference in electric potential between the negative and positive plates. Voltage is also called electric potential difference. When a capacitor stores energy or charge, it creates voltage. The unit for charge is coulomb, and the unit for voltage is volt. So by looking at the formula, the unit for capacitance is coulomb per volt. A coulomb per volt is called farads. You may think that capacitance increases as the charge increases. Since as you can see in the formula, C is directly proportional to Q, but that is not the case. If we derive the formula to Q equals C times V, we can see here that Q is directly proportional to V, meaning as the voltage increases, the charge also increases, or vice versa. Since, vo since both voltage and charge increases, the capacitance or ratio of charge to voltage will remain the same. The only way to change it is by changing the physical properties or construction of the capacitor like making the plate smaller or larger or placing the two plates farther from each other. So for our next discussion, it is all about the series capacitor. But before that, let us define a series circuit. In a series circuit, each device is connected in a manner such that there is only one pathway by which charge can traverse the external circuit. Each charge passing through the loop of the external circuit will pass through each resistor in a consecutive fashion. So, what do you mean by that? Explain natin to mabuti, meron tayong sample ng isang series connection. May kita natin dito na isa lang ang daluyan ng kuryente paikot sa buong circuit. At meron din tayong ditong tatlong light bulbs or tiyataw nating resistors. Ang downside nga lang ng series connection ay kapag may nasira na isang light bulb ay hindi nagagana ang buong circuit. Next naman ay schematic diagram ng isang series combination of capacitors. May kita natin dito na meron tayong terminals which is the A and B. At ang representation ng A ay positive habang ang B ay negative. Meron rin tayong tatlong kapasitors kung saan may tatlong voltages na dumadaan. At ang bawat kapasit slide ng kapasitor ay merong blue at red na naka-highlight. Ang blue ay meaning nun ay positive charge or positive Q. Habang ang red ang meaning nun ay negative Q or negative charge. So, referring to the figure, the series combination of kapasitors is characterized by only one path for charge transfer through terminals A and B. All the series capacitors acquire the same charge. The charges in each capacitor are equivalent and are all equal to the total charge in the combination. But, because they have different capacitances, the potential differences between the plates of the capacitor are different. In summary, the following relationships apply for capacitors is in series. So for charge, the Q total is equals to Q1, Q sub 1, equals to Q sub 2, equals to Q sub 3, and so on. Ang meaning neto ay bawat mga charge sa isang series combination of capacitors ay equal. Next naman ay ang potential difference. The voltage total is equals to the V sub 1 plus V sub 2 plus V sub 3 and so on. And for the last is the capacitance. Meron tayong equation na ginagamit which is the capacitance equals to the Q or charge over voltage. I-convert natin to para maging voltage is equals to Q over capacitance. Ang, so, ang Q total over C total is equals to Q sub 1 over C sub 1 plus Q sub 2 over C sub 2 plus Q sub 3 over C sub 3 and so on. Pero, gaya nga ng sabi natin kanina, ang Q total or ang charge ay equal to each other. So, mangyari, equal to 1 na lang siya. So, 1 over C, capacitan, total capacitance is equals to 1 over C sub 1 plus 1, 1 over C sub 2 plus 1 over C sub 3 and so on. For the parallel capacitor, it is a combination of three capacitor connected to each side of its circuit from one plate to another. Since the capacitors are connected in parallel, they all have the same voltage. However, each capacitor may store different charges.
and the formula to be used is C total or total capacitance is equal to capacitance 1 plus capacitance 2 plus capacitance 3. In summary, the following relationships apply for capacitors in parallel, whereas in charge, Q total is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 and so on and so forth. The letter Q represents the efficiency of a given capacitor in terms of energy losses. For the potential energy, V total or total voltage is equal to V1 equal to V2 equal to V3 and so on and so forth. And lastly, for the capacitance, C total V total is equal to C1 V1 plus C2 V2 plus C3 V3 and so on and so forth. And C total is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3 and so on and so forth. N or the N term is the final or last given number as shown in the PowerPoint presentation. Energy stored in a capacitor. The energy stored in a capacitor is equal to the work done by the battery to move the charges from one plate to the other. In short, the energy stored in a capacitor is the work required to charge the capacitor. The energy is stored in the electric field between the plates. We can see in this illustration the electric field lines between the two opposite charge plates. This is where the energy is stored in a capacitor. As I have said earlier, energy stored in a capacitor is equal to the work done. And work done is equal to one half times the electric charge times the electric potential difference. Thus, we can find the magnitude of the energy stored in a capacitor by using the same formula we use to get the work done. So the formula for energy stored in a capacitor is U equals one half times the electric charge times the electric potential difference. Aside from this formula, we still have two formulas we can use to calculate the energy stored in a capacitor. The second formula is formulated by substituting the Q, which is the electric charge, with C times V. C is the capacitance and V is electric potential difference since Q is the product of C and V. Thus, the second formula is Q is equal to 1 half times C times the square of V. Well, the third formula is formulated by substituting the V in the second formula with Q over C since V is the quotient of Q over C. Thus, we have U is equal to 1 half times the square of Q over C. Again, U is the energy stored in a capacitor in joules. V is the electric potential difference in volts. Q is the electric charge in column. And C is the capacitance in farad. Sample number one. How much energy can be stored if 20 volts is applied to an 8 farads capacitor? Our given are the capacitance, which is 8 farads, and the electric potential difference, which is 20 volts. The formula that we will be using is the second formula, which is U equals 1 half times C times the square of V. Substituting the given in the formula, we get 1,600 joules. We can store 1,600 joules if 20 volts is applied to an 8 farads capacitor. Well, problem number one. A parallel capacitor consists of two square metal plates, each measuring 7 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meter on one side. In between the plates is a sheet of mica measuring 2 times 10 to the power of negative 4 meter thick. A. What is the capacitance of this capacitor? B. If the charge in one plate is 3 times 10 to the power of negative 8 column, what is the potential difference? And C. What is the electric field between the plates? Note. In this problem, MICA has a permittivity of 4.8 times 10 to the power of negative 11 column squared over Newton meter squared. So before solving the problem, we have to write the given first. The side of the square plate is 7 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meter. 
The distance between the plates is 2 times 10 to the power of negative 4 meter. The charge is 3 times 10 to the power of negative 8 column. And the permittivity constant of the insulating material, which is mica, is 4.8 times 10 to the power of negative 11 column squared over newton meter squared. So the question for A is what is the capacitance of this capacitor? Ang formula na gagamitin natin is capacitance equals to permittivity constant multiplied by area over distance. Since side lang yung given sa atin sa problem, in order to get the whole area of the two square metal plates, need natin siya square. So magiging formula is capacitance equals to permittivity multiplied by side squared over distance. Then, we have to substitute the given values in the formula. 4.8 times 10 to the power of negative 11 C squared over NM squared multiplied by 7 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meter squared over 2 times 10 negative 4 meter. So, 7 times 10 negative 2 meter squared is equal to 4.9 times 10 negative 3 meter squared divided by 2 times 10 to the power of negative 4 meter. Ang magiging sagot is 24.5 meter. Then we are going to multiply it by 4.8 times 10 to the power of negative 11 c squared over nm squared. And yung final answer na makukuha natin is 1.176 times 10 to the power of negative 9 farad. So, um, farad is the SI unit of a capacitor. So, yun yung magiging SI unit ng answer natin. If the charge in one plate is 3 times 10 to the power of negative 8 column, what is the potential difference? The formula that we are going to use is V or potential difference equals to charge over the capacitance. So we have to substitute the given value in the formula. 3 times 10 to the power of negative 8 column over 1.176 times 10 to the power of negative 9 farad, which is yung answer na nakuha natin kanina. Then the final answer is going to be 25.51 volts. So the symbol used for potential difference or voltage is volts. So yun yung gagamitin nating unit for our answer. And for C, what is the electric field between the plates? individual capacitors and how they are connected. There are two simple and common types of connections called series and parallel. In this section, we'll only be focusing on series connections for which we can easily calculate the total capacitance. So before tayo mag-proceed sa ating solving word problems, introduce ko muna kayo sa mga formulas na gagamitin natin later on para magkaroon kayo ng konting idea or concept, ma-familiarize kayo sa mga given and equations na gagamitan natin para sa pagsosolve involving series capacitors. So, we can find an expression for the total capacitance by considering the voltage across the individual capacitors. So, the previous picture shows a series connection of three capacitors with a voltage applied. As for any capacitor, the capacitance of the combination is related to charge and voltage by using the formula 
C is equal to Q over V where C is the capacitance, Q is the amount of charge, and V is our voltage. Uh, from this formula, pwede tayo... Consider the formula V sub 1 is equal to Q over C sub S is equal to V sub 1 plus V sub 2 plus V sub 3. Entering the expressions for V sub 1, V sub 2, and V sub 3, we get Q over C sub S is equal to Q over C sub 1 plus Q over C sub 2 plus Q over C sub 3. So, canceling the Qs, we obtain the equation for the total capacitance in series to be 1 over C sub S is equal to 1 over C sub 1 plus 1 over C sub 2 plus 1 over C sub 3 and so on and so forth. So C, C sub S stands for capacita, cap, capacitance in series. So let's proceed with our with our solving word problem. So it says here find the total capacitance for three capacitors connected in series given their individual capaci capacitances are 1.00, 5.00 and 8.00 microfarad. So First, the first step that we're going to do is list all the given. We have the um, 1.00, 5.00, and 8.00 microfarad. Uh, we're going to look for the total capacitance for this problem. So, the formula for this problem is 1 over C sub S is equal to 1 over C sub 1 plus 1 over C sub 2, plus 1 over C sub 3. The solution for this problem, we have two different methods. So, unahin natin yung first method na ating ginamit. So, the first method, we're going to substitute the given. So, we have 1 over C sub S is equal to 1 over C sub 1 which is 1.00 microfarad and uh, plus 1 over C sub 2 which is 5.00 microfarad and lastly we have 1 over C sub 3 which is 8.00 microfarad so in this case ang ating numerator ay mag, ang ating numerator is magkakaparehas pero ang ating denominator is magkakaiba so, sa ating first method, pwedeng gawin natin is i-convert muna natin sa decimal yung fraction natin. So, we have 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 divided by 5 is 0 0.2, and 1 divided by 8 is 0 0.125. So, adding all the our denominator, we get uh, 1.325. So, 1 over C sub S is equal to 1.325 over my uh, over microfarad. So, ang gagawin lang natin dito is i-cross multiply natin. Since ang hinahanap natin dito is yung C, C sub S or yung series to, total series capacitance natin. So, cross multiply natin siya para maiwan yung C sub S. So, nung ni-cross multiply natin, we have 1.325 times C over S then is equal is equal to 1 times microfarad. So, para makancel natin yung C sub S, we're going to divide both side by 1.325. So, 
cancel natin yung 1.325, maiiwan yung C sub S so, is equal to 1 microfarad over 1.325. So, dividing 1 over 1.325, we get C sub S is equal to 0.755 microfarad. So, in this part, gagawin natin yung second method. Uh, same formula yung gagamitan natin. So, we have 1 is 1 over C sub S is equal to 1 over C sub 1 plus 1 over C sub 2 plus 1 over C sub 3. So, substitute the given. 1 over C sub S is equal to 1 over C sub 1, which is 1.00 microfarad, plus 1 over C sub 2, which is 5.00 microfarad, plus 1 over C sub 3, which is 8.00 microfarad. So, 1 over C sub S is equal to 40 over 40 microfarad, plus 8 over 40 microfarad, plus 5 over 40 microfarad. So, unlike kanina sa naunang method natin, kinonvert natin yung fraction into um, decimal since ang ating denominator ay magkakaiba. So, dito sa second method, ang gagawin lang natin is uh, i-change natin yung dissimilar fraction into similar fraction by finding the LCD of, the, of our denominator or the least common denominator. So, since 1, 5, 8 ang ating denominator, ang kanilang LCD is 40. So, 40 divided by 1 is 40. That will be our numerator. 40 divided by 5 is 8 for the second numerator. And 40 divided by 8 times uh, 1 is equal to... Uh, 40 divided by 8 is 5 times 1 is equal to 5. So, ngayon, similar na yung ating fraction, we can add them together. So, 1 over C sub S is equal to... Uh, 40 plus 8 plus 5, we get 53 and uh, copy lang natin yung denominator. So, we have 1 over C sub S is equal to 53 over 40 microfarad. So, since ang hinahanap natin is yung total capacitance ng ating series, which is yung C sub S, uh, what are we going to do is uh, uh, cross multiply again para ma mawala yung 1. So, cross-multiply natin, we have 53C sub S is equal to 40, 1 times 40 microfarad. So, para makancel yung 1, we divide both sides by 53. So, we have um, 53 over 53C sub, sub S over 53 is equal to 40 microfarad over 53. So, cancel na yan. Pag na-cancel, ang matitira is C sub S is equal to 0.755 microfarad. Same sa nakuha natin kanina sa first method. So, let's try to solve this second problem. Pwede rin kayong mag-solve sa inyong mga paper para makita natin kung tama, day, ta, kung tama rin ba yung makukuha ninyo. So, First, the problem, it says here that two capacitors, one of 10 microfarad and one of 60 microfarad, are connected to a 10 voltage battery in a series. A diagram of the circuit is shown on your screen. So, determine A, the total capacitance, B, the charge stored on the 100 microfarad capacitor, and C, the voltage drop across the 60 microfarad. So, nakikita ninyo yung illustration or figure, ayan yung um, illustration ng ating problem. So, para sa letter A, to find the total capacitance, we'll use the equation uh, given on the previous problem na ating nasolve kanina in determining the equivalent, equivalent capacitance of capacitors in series. So, we have 1 over C sub S is equal to 1 over C sub 1 plus 1 over C sub S. What we're going to do is substitute the given. We have 1 over C sub S, where C sub S stands for the total capacitance of our series. Then, is equals to 1 over 100 microfarad plus 1 over 60 microfarad, the values of our C sub 1 and C sub 2. So, C sub S is equal to 37.5 microfarad. 
So, paano natin nakuha? So, sa- same method na ginawa natin kanina. What we're going to do first is, since dissimilar ang ating fractions, bawal tayo mag-add ng dissimilar, we change it to similar by finding their LCD or the least common denominator. So, ang LCD nila is 300. So, 300 divided by 100 is equal to 3 times 1 is equal to 3. So, we have 3 over 300. 300 divided by 60 is equal to f- uh, 5 times 1 is equal to 5. We have 5 over 300. Now, na similar na sila, pwede na nating i-add. We have 3 over 300 plus 5 over 300, we get 8 over 300. So, 8 divided by 300, we will get 0.027. So, we have 1 over C sub S is equal to 0.027 over microfarad. So, same method kanina, we're going to cross multiply para mawala, mawala yung 1 at maiwan yung C sub S natin which is yun yung hinahanap. So, cross multiply natin, makukuha natin is 0.027 times C sub S is equal to 1 times microfarad. So, para makancel na makancel at maiwan yung C sub S, we're going to divide both sides by 0.027 so, we'll get 1 over 0.027 so, nakancel na siya so, C S is equal to 0 is equal to 37.5 microfarad 1 divided by 0.27 is equal to 37.5 microfarad in letter B, since the charge is the same across capacitors in series, we can use the charge found using the total capacitance and the t- total voltage drop to find the charge in the C sub 1 capacitor. So, we're going to use the formula Q is equal to C sub S times the voltage. So, kukunin lang natin yung nakuha natin sa letter A yung total capacitance ng ating series kanina which is yung 37.5 microfarad. So, we have Q is equal to 37.5 microfarad multiplied by the by our uh, voltage na given naman sa problem which is 10. So, we're just going to multiply these two values. Ang ating uh, charge or yung Q natin is equal to 375 microcoulomb. So, next is sa letter C, since alam na natin yung charge and yung capacitance natin na nakuha natin sa letter A and letter B, uh, we can find the vol- uh, voltage drop using the formula Q is equal to C sub 2 over uh, I, C sub 2 times V sub 2. Ang gagawin lang natin is since V sub 2 ang nawawala, gamit yung equation na yan is uh, can- uh, cancellation so we're going to divide both sides by C sub 2 para makancel at maiwan yung V sub 2 na hinahanap natin so ito na yung bago nating formula, V sub 2 is equal to Q over C sub 2 V sub 2 is equal to 375 micro column na compute natin sa letter B yung uh, charge natin represented by letter Q over 60 microfarad uh, which is yung C sub 2 natin na given na sa problem. So, yung V sub 2 natin is equals to 375 microcoulomb divided by 60 microfarad will get an answer of uh, V sub 2 is equal to 6, 6.2 voltage. And now we will be working on problems with capacitors in parallel. So, parallel capacitor. So, yeah. Here we have sample problem number three. Um, with this given problem, we need to calculate the total capacitance, the total charge, and the total voltage of each circuit. So, of course, we need to identify the circuit. 
um, will know if the given problem is parallel when it has more than one loop and is all connected to the same voltage. The capacitors in the circuit are arranged in parallel to each other. So here, we have a parallel circuit that has three capacitors of value, which are the C1 is equal to 4 farad, C2 is equal to 6 farad, and C3 is equal to 8 farad. And we have a voltage that is equal to 12. So, um, we, ha we need to um, calculate the total capacitance with this formula. Um, C total is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. So, basically, pag a up lang natin sila. Yung tatlo and um, C1, which is 4 farad plus 6 farad plus 8 farad. And we'll get total of 18 farad. So, 18 farad is our total capacitance. Next, uh, we need to um, calculate the total charge of the circuit using this formula. Yeah, Q is equals to C times V. So, sa na uh, sa na calculate natin kanina, um, ang, ang nakuha natin total uh, ang nakuha natin total capacitance is 18. So, that will be 18 times 12, the voltage. Yan. In 12 is yung voltage. So, we'll get um, 216. So, 216 is our total charge. Next, um, is we need to uh, calculate the total voltage of each capacitor. And the voltage for each capacitor is 12. The charge in each capacitor can be found using the equation Q is equals to CV. C times V. So, note, keep in mind that um, in a parallel circuit, the voltage across each capacitor is same and equal to the total voltage in the whole circuit. So, uh, ibig sabihin, ang voltage daw ng bawat kapasitor ay parehas lang sa total voltage ng buong circuit. So, kanina, ar kanina ang voltage natin is uh, ang given voltage ang given voltage sa problem natin is 12. So, that will be uh, the total voltage ng circuit natin. Pare-parehas na sila ng voltage. So, yeah. For Q1, um, we have this C1 times V1. Substitute lang natin. 4 times 12 is equals to 48C. Next, Q2, substitute and multiply. And we'll get 72. And for Q3, substitute lang then Same process. And 96 and... Um, once the voltage and the charge in each capacitor is calculated, the circuit is solved. Yan. So basically, nakuha na natin lahat ng hinahanap natin sa problem, which is yung um, total capacitance natin, yung nauna natin sinolve, uh, and yung total charge natin, and voltage ng each capacitor. So, ilalagay lang natin siya, ilalabel lang natin. Ganyan. So, that's it. I hope may natutunan kayo. <laughs> I hope you guys understand and thank you. Thank you.